Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm Sheldon and this is Behind the Enthusiast. Today we are going to be doing a head-to-head -head comparison between two models. One of them is my favorite bike, which is the Fat Bob, in this case the 114 variant. And the most recent demo ride that I took was on the Sportster S. And the more that I thought about it, the more these bikes seem to be the same, yet obviously different in their own ways because of their platforms and their motors. And so I figured kind of makes sense that we do a little head to head and see which one is better, or at least go off of a checklist to see which one might be better depending on your needs. So let's get into it. So first things first, we have a 2023 Fat Bob 114. Pick whatever color you want, keep things simple, go with Vivid Black. Now, the Sportster S, you can go and spend a little bit extra money, pick whatever color you want, because the Fat Bob is going to cost you a little bit more money for the base price anyway. So, we have the Muscle Cruiser, if you will, um, Power Cruiser, however you guys want to call that. The Fat Bob, technically, if you're going off the Harley-Davidson website, is classified as a Muscle Cruiser, and the sports stress, as far as I'm concerned, is a power cruiser. But are they really that different? I don't think so. And so you have the Fat Bob, which is going to run you guys $23,999 as a base price. MSRP from the website, Canadian, keep that in mind. And the sports stress is going to run you $19,499. And, well, obviously... We got to figure out which one is worth it, which one has really good qualities for a motorcycle in terms of our preferences. So someone might say, well, this is a high quality motorcycle because of X, Y, and Z. Someone else might come up with completely different reasons as to why they would prefer the other model. So in this case, the Fat Bob, obviously, coming from the Softail family, Sports Dress, part of that new RevMax family. And so we've got standard frame compared to that modular system. A lot of people think that that is an advantage with the modular system because everything is very easy to take on and take off. However, I would have to disagree based on the experience that I have with a motor basically having to come completely apart to actually access everything. And so I wouldn't say that that's necessarily an advantage. So I'm going to keep that one out of the debate for the, for the moment, because I can understand why people would come from certain angles and say, Hey, this has got advantages for this reason or that reason. So I'm going to focus mainly on the reasons that I perceive these bikes to be better than the other so the pros and the cons and so price obviously that was kind of the major one is very obvious right one costs more than the other however what are you actually getting for these prices now the fat bob 114 that is the equivalent of 1868 cc's with a 10 and a half to 1 compression ratio Sports Thrust, on the other hand, even though it is a 1250, it's rated as 1,252 cc's with a 12 to 1 compression ratio. Now, what does that actually equate to horsepower-wise? 95 at 4,750 RPM for the Fat Bob and 121 at 7,500 RPM for the Sports Thrust. Quite the discrepancy there. So we have the Fat Bob 114. Obviously, people are going to look at it and say, wow, the the displacement is massive. However, sports dress, approximately 600 cc's less. However, higher compression, higher revving motor, and a ton of horsepower. Keep in mind, this is liquid cool. This is a completely different platform. And so the sports dress definitely has the advantage in the performance segment. And when you start going a little bit deeper into these bikes, they both have inverted forks for the front ends, so no difference really there. 
fuel. We have a 13.2 liter tank on the Fat Bob and 11.8 liters on the Sports Terrestre, which, depending on how you guys are riding these bikes, is, well, going to be a huge determining factor because, according to the website, this is just on paper, you get 5 liters per every 100 kilometers for the Fat Bob and 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers for the Sports Terrestre. Now, we have no idea, well, at least I don't have any idea based on the website because it didn't specify what ride mode you guys are in. So are we in rain mode? Are we in sport mode? I have no idea. But based on my experience from riding the sports terrace, the tank's too small. It's really thirsty. And so I think the Fat Bob's going to take this one because it has a bigger tank. And even though it's 0.2 liters more per 100 kilometers, it's really not a whole lot if you're just cruising around. Sports the rest, on the other hand, is going to be uh, sucking back that gas maybe a little too much for your liking, depending on your riding style. Now, we've got a dual disc front on the Fat Bob, single disc on the Sports Terrestre, and... Beyond that, I guess there's only one more thing in terms of performance. I suppose that would be the weight. 674 pounds for the Fat Bob and a mere 502 for the Sports Terrestre. And I believe this was in running condition, so wet weight with all the fluids and everything in it. So, obviously, there's another discrepancy there. Technically, it's part of the performance. However, going into the utility of the bikes we've got passenger seat and pegs on the fat bob so if you're looking to take a passenger you just buy the bike and go sports to rest it's going to cost you a little bit more money but a thousand dollars for the passenger components so the pegs the seat and it's highly recommended that you put the sissy bar on there because the seat is so dang small it is not a good idea to have this bike without a sissy bar on it. And, well, of course, if you're thinking about luggage, well, you can actually put a luggage rack with a sissy bar on the Fat Bob, and you don't lose any comfort there for the passenger. Sports Therese isn't an option, so the Fat Bob is taking the point on that one. Now, we've got performance. We've got weight. We've got fuel economy. We've got price. What else really is there? Well, depending on your taste, depending on what you want to do with the bike, whether or not you want to just buy it and ride it, or buy it and build it, the Fat Bob has a lot more options when it comes to building. Now, obviously, you're going to be at a disadvantage for that performance, 95 horsepower to 121. So, for example... A 122 kit is only going to bring it up to about 110 horsepower, and a 131 kit finally gets you above that threshold by 3 horsepower at 124. Now, obviously you're going to be spending a lot of money to get the Fat Bob up to the power numbers. However, the weight, you're still at, what, 170? 170 pounds more on the Fat Bob, so... It's definitely a heavier bike. However, depending on the cam that you use in it, maybe it'll perform a little bit better, provided you're able to cut that weight down a little bit. Maybe carbon fiber wheels or something crazy. So this is definitely the more expensive route if you're all about performance. If you want performance right out of the box, go with the Sports Terrestre. That much is pretty obvious. Now, insurance... That is going to be another uh, thing for you guys to take into consideration. A Fat Bob, because it is a 114, your insurance company might look at that and say, oh, well, it's a 114, bigger displacement, a lot more for insurance. A Sports Terrestre is only a 1250, technically right. Your insurance company might actually give you a lower insurance quote for this model, even though it has way more horsepower and, well, maybe we should keep that to ourselves. Now, the other fees that are associated with both these bikes, we got freight and surcharge. Freight, $850 for the Fat Bob, $750 for the Sports Terrestre, and the surcharge, 
800 for the fat, the fat Bob, and 500 only for the Sportster S. Now, in terms of a final price, we're not doing anything fancy for the Fat Bob. We're just going with Vivid Black. $25,649, by my calculations, is approximately what we're looking at before any of the major fees, taxes, that type of thing. And for the Sportster S, this is going to include some of those passenger components to kind of bring it up to par with the Fat Bob. Obviously, there's still some uh, shortcomings of the sports rest. There's limitations, if you will. $22,349. So approximately $3,300 difference. Now, keep in mind, you can actually spend a little extra money on choosing whatever paint job you want for a sports rest, and you're still going to be paying a lot less. Again, sports rest is full of performance. Now, technology... Obviously, it's going to have a TFT screen and everything else. But when you actually look at everything, aside from what I've just told you guys, it really comes down to utility, experience, all these things combined. And so even when we look at it from a point standpoint, you know, one point here, one point there, we've got the Fat Bob with a lot of good qualities and I'm going to list these off for you guys based on my experience. Now, obviously, someone else might say, oh, that's not really that big of a deal. So this is up to you to figure out whether or not my system of calculating which one is better than the other is actually effective or it makes sense. So you guys can obviously come up with your own systems when you're comparing bikes. But this is just how I do it. Now, the Fat Bob, I found that the headlight was way better than the sports stress. I found that it was very lacking. It just wasn't as good. The cluster is so much more simple on the Fab Bob and the TFT one on the sports stress had a tendency to flick her as I was riding it at night. So when you're going over those under the street lamps, you know, the overhead light, it made it look like it was flickering and it was super distracting and I did not like it whatsoever. Being able to put a passenger on the bike right from the get-go, to me, is great. I love the fact that I can do that with a sports dress. I don't really want to add stuff. And to be completely honest with you guys, this bike is so small, I really don't want a passenger on it. It's, it's barely big enough just for me to go on on my own. Now, the travel aspect, sports dress is more of a bar hopper, I guess. You know, just kind of bobbing around if you will and this thing you can almost just drag race from light to light with this thing because of the horsepower so if you ask me it's not really a highway bike i would much prefer a fat bob plus here's the thing about the added weight this actually comes in handy for when you're going through a windy section of road or highway because you're not going to get moved around as much and the sports rs was a little bit loose when I was demo riding it. Now, the build aspect, I love customizing my bikes. Not that I do a whole lot of that at the moment, but if I'm looking at a bike and I'm looking at its potential, I don't care how much money it's gonna cost me, I will budget for what I wanna do to the bike. However, if you guys don't care about money and you wanna put a lot of customizations onto the bike, the Fat Bob totally wins in that category because you can literally like i said do a 122 kit 131 you can do tons of cosmetics to this bike sports stress you basically just buy it and ride it there's not a whole lot to do to it obviously you can still modify you can put a different exhaust on it but in terms of the amount that you can do to it to drastically change it i don't think there's enough right now maybe down the road a lot more aftermarket companies will come out and offer things to make them really really cool and customized but i don't think we're there at the moment now aside from that we have the suspension the suspension on the sports rs really let me down i was not happy with it regardless of the settings that i put on i was not happy with it now i was told that this has more to do with the front suspension the front end of the bike as opposed to the rear however when i was on the fat bob I had the dial set perfectly, I could go over train tracks, and I didn't feel a thing. Now, obviously, on the flip side, if you set the dial the wrong way, it's going to throw you off the bike. But the fact that the 
the knobs are on both bikes are very easily accessed so you you can change it whenever you want however i felt that the fat bob the changes that you can make to it were much more noticeable and so to me the fat bob definitely gets my vote for suspension the seat is perfect the fat bob literally has the perfect seat on that bike i don't think i've ever sat on a more sat on a motorcycle before and felt so confident in the seating position felt so planted and obviously when you're comfortable on the bike if the range say the gas tank is even larger you're going to want to continue to ride the bike and for me that is way more valuable than a rocket ship that feels like it's going to throw me off the back now another thing that you guys might want to consider is the sound that the bikes can make obviously we have an air cooled m8 114 compared to the rev max and even though they're really barky and bleh, it's maybe not for you kind of that deep grunt that we're so used to out of the harleys i'm so used to that sound every time i hear it i'm like oh that's a harley oh that's a harley you hear let's say a crotch rocket going down the road or something it's not a harley right unless of course we start making super bikes or something like i don't know maybe the bronx but i don't think the bronx even if it ever does come out will ever sound like a crotch rocket it's gonna sound like a sportster s or a pan america or something like that maybe even a nightster i don't know however the sound i think it's gonna have to grow on some of us before we become accustomed to it now obviously when you're looking at all these points i'm kind of putting the sportster s down a little bit however this thing absolutely destroys the fat bob in performance horsepower it destroys it weight huge difference technology right and i'm talking about everything on it rider enhancements the safety you know you're not as likely to do a wheelie on the bike because it's anti-wheelie now stuff like that that is what you're paying for because obviously in comparison from a standard you know 83 or 1200 is a huge jump up to a sports rs however you're getting a lot there and when you compare it to the fat bob if you really care about performance get the sports stress it's a no-brainer price i mean considering what you're getting if you're on a budget you're gonna buy the sports stress and if you're single again it's a no-brainer it makes perfect sense for someone like you to go get the sports stress miles per gallon this one is a little bit tricky because obviously if you're able to get 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers it's going to be a little bit cheaper on gas than the fat bob however you still got that small tank to com to compete with so you have to uh maybe take it a little bit easy however what would be the point in that right the sports rs is meant to be opened wide open and have a blast on it this thing is just bonkers i mean it is crazy i do like it but when it comes down to choosing one over the other you have to look at all of these elements such as maintenance it's another one now obviously liquid cooling so the engine that design the maintenance you're going to have less oil to be changing out so your you know initial purchase point you're going to be spending less now i was also told that the maintenance on these things are gonna the in intervals i should say are going to be much longer so that means you're not going to be doing as much maintenance on these bikes so that is a selling point obviously but when you look at it as a whole for me personally the fat palm just edges out the sports duress by two or three categories and that is about it however if you guys are looking at going out in a country roads or going on a road trip or something the fat bob definitely makes way more sense you can put a, a a swing arm bag on it just like the sports terrace however you can put a luggage rack on there put a sissy bar on there your passengers behind you your girlfriend your wife whoever plus you guys get to put luggage on there and the swing arm bag as well and 
maybe you can squeeze a tank bag on there as well. Or change the exhaust and figure out a way to put hard saddle bags on there. I believe there's uh, a few options for that as well. And that really is one of the major selling points for me personally. I like cruising. I don't like going fast all the time. I race. I race flat track. I get it out on the track. When I go on the street, I want to cruise. I want to be comfortable. I want to be planted. I want to be confident riding in all areas. So for me, the Fat Bob 114 makes perfect sense. If I was a little bit younger, maybe a bit of a hooligan, maybe was looking to go super, super fast and impress the ladies, Sports to Rest probably would be more up my alley. However, it's not. I'm kind of past that point. I don't need a Sports to Rest to impress the ladies. I just want to go out and cruise. I want to be safe. I want to enjoy myself. I want to have a great ride. So for me, at the end of the day, my choice is still going to be the Fat Bob 114. Now, obviously, you guys might not agree with me. So come up with your own point system and let me know in the comment section down below why you guys would choose the Sportster S over the Fat Bob. Or if you guys agree with me, let me know why you would choose the Fat Bob over the Sportster S. Hopefully you guys like this video, and if you did, make sure to smash that like button so I know that it's working. Again, leave those comments down below. Let me know which one you chose and why. And if you already own them, what have your experiences been like? Or if you've ridden both, which one did you guys like more? And of course, be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss out on future content on the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.